All right, and this is um, the next video for my pre-calculus trig equations involving more than one function lab. And I wanted to do number 10 with you because it's a double angle. And I want to let you know when I say double angle, it's because inside here there's a two. So if you look at your um, reference sheet of trig identities, here is right here is the sign of a double angle. And it's two sine of the angle, cosine of the angle. So if I see two theta or two a or two x inside the parentheses, if there's a two of any sort, that is a double angle measure. So what we're going to do here is actually replace the sine of the double angle. What it, what it just said was two sine of the angle, cosine of the angle. And then because this is in sine and cosine, I do know that tangent is on the front of here, a way to write tangent, it's sine over cosine, so that my whole equation will be in sine and cosine. Okay, so now what I'm going to do here is basically kind of cross multiply because I have a fraction. So I have 2 sine theta cosine squared theta equals sine theta. And then I'm going to move it over to this side. So I have 2 sine theta cosine squared theta minus sine theta equals 0. Now, this one right here, because it has two functions, you're saying, well, you're trying to get it into one. This one is a little bit unique. That's why I wanted to do this with you, because here is a term and here is a term. I can factor out sine theta. So I'm going to factor sine theta out. When I do, I get 2 cosine squared theta minus 1 equals 0. Then I'm going to do a big T here. I know sine theta is going to equal 0. Then I have 2 cosine squared theta minus 1 equals 0. And then I'm going to do 2 cosine squared theta equals 1. And my thetas are looking worse and worse as I go along here. So let me fix that one right there. Then divide by 2. So cosine squared theta equals 1 half. And then I'm going to take the square root of both sides. And remember, it's plus and minus here. So I have cosine of theta equals a positive radical 1 half. And I have a cosine theta equals a negative radical 1 half. Okay, so let's go through this first. I have sine theta equals 0. So let me draw my picture. All right, so sine theta equals 0 here. So if I hit inverse sine, of 0, okay, I am going to get 0 degrees. But you got to remember, this is the point 1, 0, so sine is 0, 0 degrees is one of them. But you got to remember, over here at 180 degrees, it's negative 1, 0, so 180 degrees is also an angle. And if I come back over to 360, that would be 0, because we had to go to 360. So this little piece is 0 degrees, 180, and 360 degrees. Now I'm going to look at this right here. I have cosine theta is positive. So I know cosine is positive in quadrant 1 and quadrant 4. If I hit inverse cosine of a positive radical 1 half, when I do that, I get 45 degrees. So this is really another way of looking at radical 2 over 2. So 45 degrees is going to be right here. And then if I do um, 360 minus 45, I get 315. So 315 and 45 go with this one right here. Okay. Now they say it's negative. So I know cosine is negative here and cosine is negative here. So I'm going to use the same reference angle, but now I'm going to do 180 minus 45, which gives me 135 degrees. And then three, excuse me, 180 plus 45 gives me 225 degrees. So this question, this is why I wanted to do it with you, has three angles here, 0 degrees, 180, and 360. And then it has four angles right here. So there's seven angles that satisfy this equation. So that's why I wanted to do this one with you, because this one's a little bit different with a double angle. All right, so now let's go on to number 11. The one thing I want you to realize is this page only has radians through 11 through 14. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to do these with you to help you out. But you got to remember, you can leave your calculator in degrees if you want. Just make sure that your answer is in radians. So the first thing I look at and say, oh, wait a minute, I have cosine and double angle. So I know I'm going to look at my reference sheet. 
or my identity sheet, but I also look to see that this is cosine. So I want to pick the identity that has cosine in it because cosine of a double angle on this page here has three of them. You get to have a choice of this one, a choice of this one, or a choice of this one. And again, I remember I'm going to let you use this sheet for this. And since the rest of this is in cosine, I'm going to use number two and put two cosine of the angle minus one in that spot because the rest of it is in cosine. So I'm kind of being smart. So I write two cosine of the angle squared minus one in this spot. Then I'm just going to continue on cosine of the angle plus one equals zero. Now, because of this minus one and plus one, I can say thanks for playing. So I end up with two cosine squared of the angle plus cosine of the angle equals zero. Now, again, this one is much easier to factor than it is to use the quadratic formula. So I'm going to factor out cosine of the angle. So I have two cosine of the angle plus one equals zero. Okay. Now I'm going to make a big T here. So I have cosine of the angle equals 0. Then I have 2 cosine of the angle plus 1 equals 0. Cosine of the angle is going to equal negative 1 divided by 2, so it's going to be negative 1 half. Okay? So I just did that in two steps. I subtracted 1 first and then divided by 2. So the first one I'm going to do is do inverse cosine of 0. And I know that's on the quadrant. So let me draw my picture here. Where's cosine 0? Well, here is 0, 1, and 0, negative 1. If I put inverse cosine of 0, I'm going to get 90 degrees if I'm in degrees. But I want this in radians. So that's pi over 2. So that's going to be right here. But I also know that cosine is 0 down here, and I know that that one is 3 pi over 2. So there's two angles that go with inverse cosine of 0. Now this one is a negative half, so I'm going to put in my calculator inverse cosine of a positive 1 half. Okay? When I do that, I get 60 degrees. But I know that 60 degrees is pi over 3. So this is pi over 3, and this is my reference angle, okay? So then I look, this is a positive, so cosine is positive here and here. So here's my denominator, so I'm going to do this. I've got 3 pi over 3 here, 6 pi over 3 here, and then I know here pi over 3 is going to be uh, one of my, um, excuse me, I did this wrong because it's, I want to know where cosine is negative. So let's just erase what I just did because this is, <laughs> I'm sorry. So this is negative one half. So when I do cosine is negative, cosine is negative here and here, my fault. When I do this, I still get pi over three as a reference angle. I still say three pi over three and six pi over three. But then I go back one, two pi over three is going to be one of my answers. And then here I add it, it's going to be 4 pi over 3. So with the exception of my little mistake there of where it's positive, I have to go in the quadrants where it's negative. So I have four answers here. I have pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. That's these two. And then in this quadrant, I have 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3. Okay. Let's try number 12. Again, this is a double angle. So I'm going to clear the ink from this page so we can see what we're doing. So I see I have a double angle here. So I look and see that there's sine in here. So I'm going to pick the double angle formula that has sine in it. So since there's three for cosine, this one has sine in it. This one does two, but it has both. So I'm going to pick number three, one minus two sine squared of the angle. So I've got two sine squared theta minus, and I'm going to put down what I just showed you, which was one minus two sine squared of the angle and put it equal to zero. Now, the reason why I put this in parentheses is because this negative has to be distributed. So I end up with 2 sine squared of the angle minus 1 plus 2 sine squared of the angle equals zero. Now I have 4 sine squared of the angle minus 1 equals zero. Now I can actually use the quadratic formula here if you want. Or you can factor or whatever. I actually factored this because it's easy to factor. This is 2 sine 
of the sine of the angle minus one and two sine of the angle plus one because this is like the difference of two squares. So I kind of like doing it that way. Make a big T. So I have two sine of the angle equals one, sine of the angle equals one half. This one is going to be sine of the angle is going to equal negative one half because I put them both equal to zero. And then when I move this over, it turns negative. I just kind of skipped a step there because I'm running out of room. So I'm going to do inverse sine of a half. Okay. And when I do inverse sine of a half, I know that it's a 30 degree angle or if you will, pi over six. All right. And so I'm going to do set this all up. Okay. So sine is positive here and here. And then sine is negative here and here. So if I know it's positive pi over 6 here, I'm going to call this 6 pi over 6, 12 pi over 6. And then I said, all right, what's this going to be here? Oh, 5 pi over 6. So the other angle here is going to be 5 pi over 6 because I'm going to subtract 1. This is the negative of the same thing, so I'm going to add it. So that's going to be 7 pi over 6 because that's in quadrant 3 right here. So 5 pi over 6 is here. And this is going to be a 12 pi over 6, and I'm going to subtract 1 as 11 pi over 6. Okay, so there's four angles that this one works. You have pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6, and 11 pi over 6. So that's kind of cool. You could use the same one to go all the way around. I'm going to do another video for um, the other ones on this page.